my crafty friends in this card making tutorial video I'm going to be showing you how I made this thinking of you card and also going to be talking about some of my favorite tips for using die cuts. Hi there my name is Nicola Blanc and I like to make card making videos here on YouTube. As always I invite you to check the description box below for more information. Okay, so the stars of this project today are going to be this die set from Concord and Ninth. This is their Eclectic Garden die set. And I'm also going to be using that um, in conjunction with this scrapbook.com slimline sized paper pad um, in the color Sherbet. So kind of the first tip I wanted to talk about here um, with using these layering dies is choosing colors what colors to use. Um, personally, I know that it can sometimes be almost overwhelming to go through our stashes, find colors, enough colors that coordinate together. Um, and it can be kind of tricky. Um, one thing that I found lately that's really helping me with choosing colors is using something like these scrapbook.com paper pads. I like that they come with a bunch of different colors of cardstock that already coordinate together. Um, and then as well, the cardstock is um, an 85 pound, so it still has a little bit of um, nice weight to it. Um, but yet, if you layer them up as well, um, it doesn't make them quite too, too bulky. It's the perfect uh, weight cardstock for these sort of things. So once I've gone ahead and chosen out what colors I wanted to use for my project, um, what I like to do is kind of dig through the different layering dies and sort those out with the respective colors that I've chosen. I like doing it this way because it gives me a nice visual um, and keeps me organized with all the little teeny tiny pieces um, so that I'm not losing any of the pieces here from my project. So one by one, I'm just slowly zipping those through my die cutting machine today. Um, today I decided to use this small die cutting machine. This is the Sizzix die cutting machine. It's called the Sidekick. Um, and I think it's a really fun and really cute, honestly just super cute uh, machine here to use. So in addition to these um, items here that you're seeing me cut on screen, I also went ahead and cut a couple of those um, floral images on the left um, from just some white cardstock, um, as well as the base layer of the hummingbird from a couple layers of white cardstock as well, um, just so that I would have some layers to um, add up some dimension on. So on screen now you can see that I'm starting to assemble these dies and while I'm doing that I just wanted to also talk about kind of some tips for assembling these die cuts. So depending on what kind of layering dies you're using, sometimes they can be kind of tricky to um, line up or use. Um, so I'm going to share some of my favorite tips here with you. First of all, um, I find it easy to, easier to use a liquid glue for these. That way you get that nice couple seconds of wiggle room time um, just in case you don't get your um, pieces of paper placed right in the perfect spot. Um, and I'm really liking this glue from Barely Arts. Uh, this is their precision craft glue and I like that it has the teeny tiny uh, precision tip on the end so you can add literally the teeniest, tiniest uh, drops of glue. I love this so that I don't end up with glue oozing outside of my project. And also it gives me really nice control for these little tiny pieces. So as you can see here, as I'm working through these, I like to start with the bottom layers first. Um, I find those kind of the easiest to line up. I just kind of hold the edges, uh, wiggle the edges a little bit until they're lined up and then I press them together. And I always like to set that acrylic block on top just so that my different layers of paper dry nice and flat. Once I start getting into some of the smaller pieces of cardstock here to adhere, um, for those I like to start pulling out some of my kind of specialty tools to use. Um, so with these I find that the scrapbook.com tweezers are super helpful. Um, as well here you can see that I'm using one of these um, jewel pickers to pick up these tiny pieces of cardstock as well. So I like to kind of pick up the little piece of cardstock, rotate it around so I know the perfect place that it goes on my image um, before I stick it down in the glue. 
So now that my hummingbirds are pretty much adhered together, I'm going to move on to the floral images. So once again, using those same tips that I just talked about, right? Using glue with a fine tip applicator to ensure that um, I'm getting just the perfect amount of glue. Using a liquid glue so that I get that little bit of wiggle room um, to also make sure that my items are lined up before I press them together. And um, once I'm happy with the way that those are looking, I'm putting an acrylic block on top just to make sure that it dries nice and flat. So now that the base layer of my flowers is done, I'm going to go ahead and add on these uh, sort of the floral petal uh, die cuts. So for these, using teeny tiny drops of glue once again from that precision glue bottle and using the jewel picker to perfectly align each of these uh, florals on top. So you can see there it's really easy for me to pick up these little pieces of these little tiny die cut pieces, rotate them around, make sure they're lined up really nice um, before I go ahead and commit to it and press it down and let the acrylic blocks dry on top. So we're just about done here with this part of the die cutting. So we're going to move on to our background. So for the background today, I decided to do some ink blending with a stencil. Um, this rectangle stencil that I'm using today is from My Favorite Things. It's their Rectangle Extraordinaire Stencil. And I just went ahead and pulled out my Make Art Station um, to hold down, to use those magnets to hold down my stencil today. And I'm going to go ahead and do some blending with Distress Oxides. So for my colors today, I just went ahead and picked out some Distress Oxides that matched with the different colors of cardstock from the Hummingbirds. So you can see there I got um, kind of the yellow and aqua colors. Those are Squeezed Lemonade and Salvaged Patina. And I'm just going ahead and using a Catherine Pooler blender brush to add on those colors. So as always, just using some nice light kind of circular motions to blend in the colors. And I'm making sure in the middle that those colors overlap a little bit. So I get a nice seamless blend in the middle. So I just keep layering up the color until I'm happy with the saturation. Then I'm going to lift off that stencil um, and my background panel is done. So at this point, um, all that was left for me to prepare is my sentiment. Um, so for today, I chose a Thinking of You sentiment. Um, this is from a stamp set uh, from scrapbook.com and Photoplay. I believe it's just called Bouquet. And it comes with a bunch of kind of uh, small sentiments on it. But really, tons of stamp sets have these little tiny style sentiments on them. So take a look in your stash and see what you have. So on the screen there, you can see I'm just doing some heat embossing for the sentiment. Stamped it out in Versamark ink, used some white heat embossing powder on there, and then I'm just going to melt that with my heat tool um, until it's set. So off screen, I did go ahead and die cut out my sentiment. Um, just using a little uh, sentiment die. This one here is from Paper Rose. And at this point, I'm just kind of pulling my card together and taking a look at everything. So when I looked at my card, I wasn't thrilled with how it was coming together. I wanted to add a little bit more black, um, kind of a black frame to my card. So I decided to trim out my card panel off the front of that card, card base um, so that I'll be able to get here a nice edge. So I've gone ahead and prepared an A2 size card panel for um, my card. Um, so that's finished card size is going to be four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I've already gone ahead and scored it. And all that's really left here for me to do is to start adhering this card project together. So for the background here, just adding some ATG tape um, for that card panel, centering that as best that I can, pressing that down. And then I'm going to go ahead and pull out my liquid glue once again to add those teeny tiny dabs of glue behind my uh, floral die cut image here. And then I'm going to go ahead and place that on my card front. Once again, using those scrapbook.com tweezers, holding that down with an acrylic block to make sure it's nice and flat. At this point, I decided I wanted to trim down my thinking of you sentiment. So I'm just using my scissors and kind of eyeballing that as best I can to trim down that thinking of you. 
Um, and then at this point, I decided that um, because my hummingbird was going to overlap those florals, um, I knew that if I glued it down, it wouldn't glue nice and flat. So I did go ahead and add just a couple layers of cardstock to the right hand side of the hummingbird, um, just kind of to pop it up a little bit more and make sure that it'll glue nice and flat on my finished project. I did decide to add a little bit of foam tape behind the Thinking of You adhesive just to pop that up a little bit more off the background. Um, and at this point, um, my card project was pretty much done. Just going to grab my Teflon, Teflon bone folder here and make sure that I have a nice tight crease on the side of my card. And that's it. This project is done. So I hope you enjoyed this card project today as I talked about some of my favorite tips for die cutting. Um, as always, I'm going to share a couple other card projects here um, in case you are looking for some more crafty inspiration. And until next time, I hope you are keeping it crafty. Bye!